Yeah, I mean, it seems pretty straightforward that the uh, undergraduate notebook, uh, Certain Philosophical Questions, was drawn up and launched in early 1664, probably, um, because, to put it bluntly, that's the sort of thing um, students are supposed to do. Um, it brings together two traditions. On the one hand, the questions tradition, the question, the tradition of um, topics of inquiry, which um, raise through the commonplace evidences of the world, especially the world of sense, much deeper issues of metaphysics, of theology, maybe even of apologetics and cosmology. Um, so uh, this was to show that in the mundane phenomena of nature in its course, quite deep metaphysical questions must be raised. Um, for example, questions of taste, hearing, touch, the range of sensory experiences. Um, what is odour? What is sound? what is light, what is colour. In order adequately to answer those questions, a mastery of um, the basic principles of the philosophy of the schools was required. And these became five-finger exercises for students. Often they would be used in examinations and in defences and in disputations. And mastery of these questions and of that tradition became a sign of competence for Masters of Arts. That's absolutely the kind of institutional tradition to which Newton's undergraduate notebook, at least initially, seems to belong. What's very striking, for example, is that there are uh, headings that he never fills in. So he obviously drew up lists of headings in his notebook to reflect upon uh, to inquire into and as a kind of index system for um, his reading, that he would cast his curricular reading into these topics. So in that sense, it also belongs to the idea of common places. It also belongs to the clearly entangled tradition of topics of conversation. That's to say topics of reflection and expertise, um, which um, come to prominence in traditions of Renaissance humanism, um, which is what makes it possible for the erudite to converse. Um, and the notebook brings all of that together. That's exactly what you were supposed to do. It was absolutely expected. Um, this is normal um, work for the young scholar. What's unusual, however, as far as one can tell, is the way in which some of these topics overflow and some are connected with each other. Um, notably areas, for example, between natural philosophy of the void, of the continuum of atoms, and his mathematical work, for example, or uh, the way in which the notebook ties together questions of perception, of sense, of colour and of light in rather surprising ways. Um, it's a notebook which is clearly maintained over, what, 18 months, two years, if not more. And he comes back to it, excises some passages, adds many others. So it's the trace of a very active, young, inquiring uh, mind over a key period, say between the ages of 21 and 24.